Geo System Hot Standby. Forward. So with the rapid development of services such as mobile office, online shopping, instant messaging, uh, internet finance, all right, everything about internet, internet education, or we call it the online learning, distance learning. Uh, networks uh, carry increasing services and therefore uh, become very, very important. Okay, so how to ensure that uh, uninterrupted network transmission is an uh, is an issue that needs to be uh, resolved urgently during the uh, network development. Okay, or maybe during the network planning. Geo system hot standby improve reliability. Um, two firewalls can be deployed at the uh, egress of uh, network to ensure the uh, communication between intranet and the internet. Okay, so we will talk about what is the uh, issue with single uh, firewall, and then we'll talk about uh, how do we solve by using the the dual. Um, all right, so what's the objective of this course? Uh, upon completion of this course, we should be able to master the technical principle of a dual standby, dual system hot standby, and also we should be able to master uh, the basic configuration of the dual system hot standby. All right, so these are the, the two topics. Um, so we will talk about the principles, and after that, we will cover on the uh, the configuration okay all right first question why do we need dual system hot standby okay so this is a very traditional uh, networking topology the following figure shows a traditional networking mode uh, packets exchange between intranet and internet so this is intranet yeah and this is uh, internet um, so user are transmitted, uh, users traffic are transmitted through firewall A. This is firewall A. If firewall A uh, is faulty, okay, so intranet host that uses the firewall A as the default gateway cannot communicate with the internet. Okay, so I think uh, this is the uh, the default gateway uh, IP and uh, all the IP addresses, all the PCs, all the servers in this network, uh, they actually rely on this one single IP address as the default gateway to go internet. So in case anything goes wrong with this firewall A, uh, therefore uh, the whole internet is actually not accessible, therefore affecting communication. And um, when you turn this into um, dollar and cents, uh, that means uh, it's, it's, a, it's a loss of uh, profit uh, for any companies, right? Okay, so here's the solution for most of the uh, uh, internet routers. So we call this redundancy deployment solution for routers. In the router networking, router, okay, we're not talking about firewall hit now, so this is router, VRRP which stands for Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol. This protocol is being used for routers to provide the redundancy for the routers. Okay, so uh, now the good thing about VRP is that uh, it's, it's actually um, an industry standard uh, routing protocol. Uh, sorry, it's a Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol. So it actually works with uh, some other uh, different vendors. Um, but here in this uh, in this uh, slides, we will focus uh, primarily on Huawei. Uh, so let's assume we have uh, three routers in this scenario, like router A, uh, router B, and there's a router C, and each of them has its own IP address, which is example dot two here. We have dot three for this IP, and there's a dot four uh, for the IP address of the interface, and then. Um, so usually, uh, as as a PC or maybe for a server, if they want to point to the default gateway, they will probably have to point to many different IP addresses uh, as the default gateway. Okay, so this is actually something which is um, um, quite uh, you know configuration intense. So just imagine uh, you have so many PC in this environment, each and every PC. 
uh, you have to configure like three default gateway <laughs> or maybe um, you can specify the primary IP address and uh, in, in the incidents where the router fail then you have to reconfigure all them to point to dot three or maybe con configure them to point to dot four which is again very intensive configuration intensive so VRRP offers this solution where you can actually configure we call a virtual IP so in this example uh, dot one is the virtual IP okay and then we will actually select okay or maybe we can let them uh, elect by themselves to have a master uh, router and the, the remaining router uh, we call backup in terms of a VRRP point of view we have master VRP and we have two backup VRP so the master VRP will be the one that is actually answering any request that's, that's pointing to dot one so if the PC wants to go to internet, so they will point to dot one as a gateway, and the master will handle the traffic and goes to internet. Okay, same goes for all the PCs or even the servers in the environment. Now, in case the incidents where master fail, okay, so these two guys either dot dot three or maybe dot four, uh, one of them will be taking over the dot one IP. Okay, a part of their own IP address, they also will will be handling dot one traffic. So one of them will become a new master. Okay, and therefore the good news is that the PC or maybe the server, they don't need to reconfigure their IP address as the as the gateway. They don't need to change because they still point to the same dot one. So they are the new uh, master will take over the traffic and then process to internet. Okay. Now this sounds like a very good solution, yeah. So this this is the reason why we call it virtual router redundancy protocol. Okay. Um, now let's look at uh, a a big scenario here. Okay. Um, this is what we call the um, multiple VRP group, which is in the uh, uh, in the firewall system. Okay. Um, so the title here is application of VRP in multi-zone firewall networking. Okay. Now before we go further, um, let me just um, explain a little bit about the uh, the zoning. Okay. Now zone is actually nothing new for any firewall brand. Uh, this is actually uh, to ease our configuration and to ease our setup. Okay. So for uh, for instance we can define uh, a zone by the name called trust okay and then after that we will include the interface which is facing the trust zone and um, and then uh, whatever policy that we configure we will specify like zone to zone policy you know instead of we have to specify oh i need uh, if any traffic coming from this interface or this interface it will be permitted and if they want to get out uh, ingress the ingress is coming from here if the egress is going out from this interface then we allow them to go out you know so instead of configuring the interface now configuring zone is actually a lot a lot easier okay so here are some examples uh, uh, we call it the default zones okay uh, trust is uh, one of the default zone which is uh, already pre-configured um, on any uh, Huawei firewall machine okay and trust will actually carry uh, we call it the zone priority of 85 all right um, and the next one is called the DMZ DMZ zone uh, carry a uh, priority value of 5050 and finally we have this zone called the untrust which actually carries uh, the priority value of number five now there's another zone which is not mentioned here is actually what we call the local zone so local zone actually refers to the firewall itself okay because there are times where we want to define if there's a traffic between the trust zone to the uh, firewall itself to the local then we need to specify this traffic uh, whether we permit or we deny uh, the access 
to into the firewall into the firewall this is not through the firewall uh, so another example is like if it's trust to and trust okay this is what we call through the firewall okay so then we can define uh, a policy with whether a permit or deny okay and the next thing that i want to talk about is the priority okay um, these are the the default priority for the zone um, and i think uh, obviously uh, you guys can uh, look at the number if the number higher or the highest it means this is a more trustable zone okay as opposed to number five okay uh, this is the untrust zone and usually untrust zone is the one that we define for the interface that's facing the internet okay uh, so now once we understand uh, zone concept and the next thing we talk about the uh, IP address, the interface. Okay, so here's the uh, uh, the example that I just uh, spoke about. All right. Um, so let's say we want to provide VRRP for the trust zone, and the VRP trust zone has this IP range of 10.0. Okay, 10, 100, 10.0. All right. And after that, uh, what we do is that we configure VRRP for group number one with the virtual IP of 10.1 okay and this is the, uh, the the VRP group okay and then we also configure the next zone which is for the DMZ uh, where the IP range is actually 20.0 and the uh, the virtual IP is actually 20.1 okay so this is actually the uh, uh, the uh, the virtual IP Okay, and the interface which is configured uh, for the DMZ will be this interface and also this interface, All right? Okay, then don't forget we have the third zone, uh, the, sorry, the third group, which is the VRP group number three. Oh, and what is this? And this is the public IP address. Okay, so let's assume this is the 20.1, which is the uh, public IP address. Right, so this is actually uh, a very typical uh, configuration uh, for the uh, uh, for the uh, multiple uh, zone and also for multiple VRP group. Okay, so this is a keyword for this slide: multiple zone, and uh, we also have to configure multiple uh, VRP group. Okay, but uh, what is the uh, issue about uh, configuring the multiple zone? Okay. Alright, so let's look at this uh, scenario. Okay. Um, okay, this is um, how do we detect the VRP in the firewall application? In traditional VRP mode, the status of the master firewall cannot be consistent with what with that of the backup firewall. Okay. Now let's talk about what is the uh, consistent. Okay. Um, okay, so first of all, let's look at the scenario. Let's assume PC1 tries to communicate with uh, PC2. Okay, this is PC2 at the uh, untrusted zone, and this is PC1 at the trusted zone. So PC1 will actually send a packet yeah, into the switch, and the switch will then send the packet to the default gateway using this path. And uh, let's assume this is the master. Okay. And after that, the traffic will then be carried forward to uh, the external network and then to internet and etc. and to the PC2. Now, during this time, uh, whatever traffic that passed through the master, okay, so actually two things the, uh, the, the master will be, will be performing. One is to check the permit, the, the security policy. To, to see whether the traffic coming from what zone to which zone are they permit or are they denied. So let's assume in this case permit. And the next thing that will happen is that the session entries will then be recorded. Okay, this is very important. Session entries will be recorded. So, so that when PC2 tries to reply the traffic, the, the packet, okay, let, um, so when this traffic comes back to um, firewall and the firewall actually will check against the session entries now this is what we call stateful firewall okay 
Yeah, stateful firewall means the firewall will always keep track of the state, the session. Okay, so if the master can find the session, which like okay, previously I saw this session, the traffic goes out, so now the the traffic comes back as a reply packet, then I will accept this traffic and then send back to the, uh, to the origin, whoever the source is. Okay, now this is actually a very um, a very typical scenario uh, if we have only one uh, firewall, okay? uh, especially the stateful kind of firewall. But what is the issue now? <laughs> the issue is that what if PC1 tries to send something to PC2 and during this transaction, let's say, the traffic actually enters to master uh, the USG uh, A and by the way, USG is actually uh, the name for the, the, the model firewall uh, in uh, for Huawei. Um, and then let's say must, uh, USGA actually sends out the packet to PC2. And during this time, this network goes down. Okay, now do you see the impact if the network goes down here? If the network goes down here, that means the VRP here, uh, they will, they will they will swing over the uh, virtual IP to this side, right? So now here's the problem. Here's the issue. So when PC2 returns the traffic back to the uh, firewall A, so let's assume this is firewall A. So now the problem is that firewall A, firewall A will be stuck here. Why? Because this this uh, network connection has already dropped, has already dropped. So so what happened is that must this uh, firewall A will just discard the return packet, okay? Because now this is the new uh, gateway, this is the new communication. So this is actually a, a big issue, a big problem. Okay, let's let's repeat the statement again. The status of the master firewall cannot be consistent with the backup firewall. Okay. So remember this uh, the problem. Uh, now later we will talk about the solution to this. Okay, uh, solution is actually very simple. Okay, we need to have somehow a kind of um, mechanism to synchronize uh, between the information from master and the backup, so that when the master fail over to uh, to the backup, the backup can actually continue to process the traffic. Okay, so this is the uh, issue. Remember that. All right. Now, to to solve the issue, we have two protocols to be introduced. Right? Now, the first protocol is what we call VGMP. Okay? You remember this is the first protocol and later we will talk about the second protocol uh which is called HRP, Huawei Redundancy Protocol. All right. So, let's look at the uh, the the description. To ensure switch over consistency of all the VRRP group, the VRRP group management protocol VGMP is developed based on VRRP. Okay. Now earlier when we spoke about the VRRP group, is is more like this is a, a detection by themselves. Okay. So for example, this is group one. Um, they will actually detect between this point and this point, these two interfaces. This is the master link, and they will actually fail over to backup link. Or maybe this is a master link, they will fail over to backup link. Now, this is actually an individual uh, status uh, detection, all right? Or maybe same as this guy, all right? Don't forget about the uh, VRP group three, all right? So VGRP is to develop, uh, is developed to have consistent. So, for example. If if uh, firewall A is the master, okay, and guess what? All this VRP group will be active, okay. All the ports at the uh, the firewall A will be the active, okay. Now, when there is a a need to fail over for whatever reason, for example, if the link goes down here for whatever reason and uh, should they need to fail over to uh, firewall B and guess what all this session will fail over at the same time all of them 
Again, all the VRP will fail over to here at the same time. Okay, so now the first thing is that we actually solve what we call the consistency of the switch over. Okay, this is the keyword for the VGMP. Switch over consistency. Anything goes wrong with master and they will swing over to the to the backup. Okay, now remember we have not solved uh, the big issue of the the session entries. Okay, remember in the, in the previous slide uh, I showed you guys about the session uh, entries. This this protocol does not help to solve the session entry. Okay, but what it does is actually help to solve the consistent the consistency of all the VRP to be filled over uh, to a physical firewall at one time. Okay. All right. So, okay. This is actually a, a, a introduction to uh, VGMP. Um, if the VGMP group of a firewall is in the active state, all VRP group in the VGMP group are also in active state. The same goes to uh, applies to standby as well. Okay, this is the one that I just mentioned. And the firewall in the VGMP active states regularly tests the peers running status, including the priority and also the VRP member status by sending a hello packet. Okay, so they will actually constantly send hello packet uh, to the uh, to each other and then uh, they will expect to receive acknowledgement okay this is to act like a like a heartbeat like a heartbeat okay all right so management of the uh, vgmp group okay so first of all um, status consistency management the VGMP group controls uh, the switch over of all the VG, uh, VRP groups, which I just uh, mentioned the situation earlier. Um, and also another thing that is managed by VGMP is the preemption preemption management. So preemption management basically means if the faulty active device recovers. Uh, maybe uh, it's just a uh, well, it was just a, maybe a power failure, and then uh, we fix the power and then bring it online. So the active uh, device now is back to online. So does the priority of the device. Okay, so in this case, the device can become active again through the preemption. Okay, now this is this can be done with uh, an option to enable or to disable okay so which which means um, if the uh, if this is the uh, active okay uh, firewall and uh, maybe due to whatever reason it actually fails over to uh, to the standby or to the backup due to whatever reason okay um, and and after that this guy you know comes back again all right when he comes back again um, so while this B is handling the traffic and we can actually configure it to say that um, uh, at a certain delay and we want the uh, uh, the session everything to be switched over back or we call it the, the fail back option back to the uh, firewall A okay this is called preemption okay go back to this guy and, and again we can also choose not to enable the preempt so which means even though A comes back and B will just carry on with whatever uh, B has been doing all this while while the A is not around um, so these are the configuration which is uh, permitted okay alright now the next that I mentioned before was uh, another issue is the session table okay um, okay before we talk about session table okay let's uh, now, if you guys remember, I mentioned about this thing, like if PC1 tries to communicate with uh, uh, PC2 or PCB, whatever, um, okay, so the session is actually being uh, recorded, okay, session A, sorry, sorry, firewall A will record the session, the going out session of PC1 to PC2. 
So when the traffic returns, okay, and uh, obviously we know one thing is the uh, source IP and the destination IP will be reversed, and also the source port and the destination port will be reversed. So and um, so this firewall will actually check the session, and if this session is is already in the session table, therefore the traffic are allowed to come back as a return packet. Okay, this is called session. But remember, I told you one thing. What happens if uh, firewall A goes down? Okay, if firewall A goes down, okay, we will swing over the IP address, the virtual IP, yeah, to firewall B, and PC one can communicate with the de the default gateway. But unfortunately, when the traffic try to pass through, okay, now maybe the traffic if it's going out is okay, but if the traffic tries to come back, okay. All right, so the uh, the session will have to be scanned through again at the uh, session table of uh, firewall B. So if the firewall B says, uh -uh, "I don't know you, I never seen you before," and therefore the returning packet will be dropped, and the PC one will have to reinitiate a new session again to communicate with PC two, and then the traffic comes back then it will only be permitted okay and uh, therefore we 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 actually causes the interruption of the network traffic for example if somebody were to perform uh, the ftp transaction during halfway and then there's a firewall switch over you know and uh, that somebody will probably have to re <laughs> download uh, the 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 file from scratch from zero again okay so let's look at the uh, uh, the solution. So this is called Huawei Redundancy Protocol (HRP). So HRP backs up dynamic status data. Okay, this is uh, the one that one I mentioned. The session table is part of the uh, status data, and also some of the key configuration commands between the firewall. Okay, uh, this is a good news. Uh, some of the the key configuration are also being backed up. Okay, so why do we need to back up? Because every time there's a changes on the master firewall, uh, the configuration updates are then uh, will be backed up to the. Uh, but not all the configuration. Certain key configuration, the key configuration. So for example, like. Uh, IP address. Okay. Now we wouldn't want to back up the IP over to this side, right? Because if we were to back up the IP from here to here, then it will cause us the IP conflict. Okay. Uh, but the session table, however, uh, for example, the TCP session table, the UDP session table, uh, the uh, the blacklist, or we call it the dynamic blacklist. Oh, okay. That what what is dynamic blacklist? Uh, dynamic blacklist is basically means um, now if somebody tries to attack us uh, from outside, okay. So now in in our next uh, topic, we will talk about the uh, intrusion uh, prevention. So the uh, the user, the the IP address will be dynamically blacklisted. Okay. So if if somebody try attempt to um, attack the firewall so the firewall will, will actually dynamically blacklist and uh, at after a certain time uh, interval um, the uh, the IP will be removed right this kind of information is what we call the dynamic information it will be synchronized to firewall B so whenever uh, there's a failover between firewall A to firewall B all this information will then be uh, will will be continued by the uh, firewall B because firewall B already has all uh, it needed. Okay, and another another status data are probably the ARP entries. Okay, because all this while firewall A is the one that handle the uh, the traffic, the transaction. The, therefore, firewall A keeps a lot of uh, ARP entries, but not firewall B. So. This is uh, it will be good, right? If the firewall A can share or maybe can synchronize the ARP table to firewall B before the 
failover happens. Okay, our next question is that how do they keep track with each other? Okay, how do you know that uh, you're still alive or maybe you're not alive? Yeah, should I take over your role and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, so this is what we call the heartbeat interface, okay? Now, the two firewalls exchange the backup data through the heartbeat interfaces over the heartbeat link, okay? Um, and a heartbeat interface must be an independent interface with an IP address, okay? This is a must. You must have an IP address. It can be a physical interface, such as any gigabit interface, or it can be a logical ETH trunk interface, okay? Now, as we learned this uh, in uh, HCNA uh, routing and switching, uh, ETH trunk is basically... Uh, we call it the link aggregation trunk where we can combine multiple physical interface um, for, uh, to, to become one logical interface. Okay, so, so this is the example. Uh, if you look at the, the bottom uh, section here, uh, scenario, uh, we have firewall 1 and firewall 2. And then this is uh, interface, a logical interface called ETH trunk 1. And here we have gigabit 101, gigabit 102, and gigabit 103 as the physical interfaces in within the uh, ETH trunk. Okay. Um, or we can also configure uh, for basic configuration. We can also configure just a simple plain one physical interface to each other. Okay. And then uh, this is the an, an IP address. As I mentioned before, it is a must. Right, so you must configure uh, the IP address to allow them to talk to each other, okay? And uh, and what are they sending to each other? They are actually sending the HRP data packets, okay? Uh, and this is what we call the um, heartbeat uh, interface, okay? So just remember this concept because later when we come to the uh, topic number two, we will talk about the configuration. And uh, I will remind you guys again, <laughs> there is a command here to specify which interface for our heartbeat. Okay. All right, next we talk about the status of the heartbeat. Okay. Uh, now, heartbeat, HRP heartbeat interfaces have five different states. Now, the first one is called invalid. And there's another one is called the uh, peer down. Okay, now let's let's look at this scenario. Uh, this is between firewall A and firewall B. Firewall B, this interface, uh, has already configured uh, everything properly with the IP address, and that means this status here is good to go. He's actually sending out the the hello packet. Okay, but unfortunately, the neighbor um, are, are still not in in the ready state. Now, the physical status could be up, but this interface has not been configured with any HRP uh, heartbeat, so therefore it will not reply with the, uh, the acknowledgement packet, and therefore we call this state as invalid. Okay? But here on this side is called peer down. <laughs> Okay, because he already configured everything and he actually sent out the, the, the heartbeat, you know, and uh, there's no response from here and therefore uh, his state here is called peer down. Peer means neighbor. The neighbor is down. Okay. Now, the next is a different scenario where we have an interface here, GE102, and this is physically down. Okay, for whatever reason, cable down. Uh, the uh, SFP not working or whatever reason um, so this is physically down so we have a different state called down but as a neighbor uh, the neighbor again has been configured everything properly 2.2.2.1 uh, HRP has been enabled on this interface and um, he, he's not getting the response yeah? so therefore this is called peer down okay all right. So the next one that we want to uh, uh, is uh, as a good message. Okay. Let's assume that both of these interfaces are in working state, 
and then you can see there is one called running state and this one called ready state. Now both of these are considered a good state. Now what's the difference between the running and ready? Now let's look at the color here. Okay, this is orange. The traffic is an orange color traffic and the traffic here is a, a green color traffic. Right, so green represents uh, HRP, heartbeat link detection packet. All right, and, uh, and the orange link, it represents the, the HRP data packet. So one is actually for the detection of the heartbeat, like the hello and the acknowledgement. And the other one is actually for the synchronization <laughs> of the, the, the configuration, that the one that we mentioned, the status, and also some of the key configuration of uh, between the two firewall. Okay. All right. So the next is we talk about the uh, the backup modes of the hot standby. Okay. So as a hot standby, we can configure uh, into multiple different modes. Okay. Uh, the first we talk about the automatic. Okay. The automatic means everything fully automatic. Okay, um, so so what do we see in the in the automatic mode? Okay, um, okay. So in the uh, in the automatic mode, okay. Um, once we enable the automatic mode, every time we execute any command. Uh, that can be backup on the firewall. The command is immediately backup to uh, the other firewall. Okay, so this one is uh, automatic. Um, in the automatic mode, the active device periodically backs up the status information, and therefore the status information of the active device is not immediately backup after its creation. Instead, the information is backed up on the standby devices around 10 seconds after the creation okay um, now the following types of the session cannot be backed up in automatic backup mode uh, so for example we have session created by the traffic designated for firewall example uh, session created for administrator login um, so example we have firewall A and firewall B you know so if somebody were to enter into firewall a yeah there's a maybe there's a ssh session or maybe web session and this is actually a session for just firewall a it has nothing to do with firewall b now this kind of information are not being backed up okay and um session created by the udp first packet okay also not being backed up Right, the next is called the uh, manual backup, batch backup, manual batch backup, okay? The manual batch backup actually means uh, this com this uh, kind of mode uh, is we need the administrator to trigger. So there is a command to trigger uh, for the, the backup. The backup will start immediately after we trigger the command and it applies to scenario where the manual backup is required when the configuration of two synchronize uh, the two devices are at asynchronous mode so which means sometimes um uh, the if if firewall a has uh, has went down uh, being being a long time and after repair maybe after what, a week and it comes back and there's so many things which is uh, not uh, synchronized then it's it's actually good for us to perform uh, the manual backup okay uh, and then we also have the uh, quick session uh, backup. Okay, now quick session here um, applies when forward and reverse path are inconsistent on the load balancing uh, network. Okay, now there are times where the, uh, the 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 incoming and the outgoing traffic are not going through the same path, especially the UDP packet. All right, and also especially when you're in the uh, uh, when you're sending a UDP packet, yeah, and um, maybe sometimes the packet goes out through firewall A, and then when it goes to the destination, then the return traffic maybe it, it goes back to firewall B, and then go back to the uh, uh, the sender or maybe to the receiver, and uh, so this kind of uh, session are actually 
uh, we call it the uh, the quick session backdump. Okay, and uh, this is actually just a command to enable that. Okay, and the final one is the uh, automatic synchronization of the firewall configuration after restarts. Okay, yeah. So in the hot standby networking, if one firewall is restarted, okay, if let's say for whatever reason we need to restart, maybe we need to perform a firmware upgrade, uh, the other firewall processes all the services during the restart. All right, so that means yes, let's assume firewall A uh, after finish upgrade the firmware, it has to restart, and all the traffic will will then f uh, f uh, fail over to firewall B. So during this time, the firewall that processes the services may have configuration being added or deleted or modified. So to ensure the active and the standby firewall have the same configuration after the firewall is restarted, let's say assume firewall A, the configuration are automatically synchronized from the firewall that processes the services. Okay, yeah. So these are the the thing which they will actually synchronize uh, automatically back again. Okay.